Revelation, as I've said before, is the principal book of prophecy in the New Testament of the Bible. Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Many authorities tell us that America is going the way of ancient Rome, but I can tell you that it's even worse than that. America is under attack from an invisible army, and I'm talking about a real army, and that could be stopped if we chose to uh, stop it, but that doesn't look very likely. Now, there, for nearly two decades, this country, America, has been under a direct attack from an invisible army in a special way. Now, that may sound a little strange to some people, but it, it, honestly, it, it's only strange if we don't know what's in our Bibles. It all is explained very clearly, very explicitly, in your own Bible. The, in the British coronation ceremony, they talk about the Bible being the greatest gift that this earth affords. Now, most people today, of course, would scoff at that. Almost nobody looks upon the Bible that way today, but that's the way God looks at it. And that's the way it ought to be with all of us. You can prove all of this to yourself. I'm not asking you to believe anything that you cannot prove. And you as an individual can escape suffering that's coming upon America if you choose to do so. Because God says if we heed what He says, He will honor that and He will protect us. That's a promise from God. God always warns His people. He always does that. And because God is love and everything God does is out of love. How hard that is for man to see. Even the suffering that comes upon us is coming upon us because of God's love to teach us and to help us get to know God because we do not know Him today. We simply don't know God and America is under attack because of that. And we need to understand why. I want to read you something that Herbert W. Armstrong wrote way back in 1956, which is not exactly what I'm talking about, but it gives you an insight into the kind of warfare that's going on against America. Notice what Mr. Armstrong wrote in 1956, and I'll just quote it to you. A psychological warfare of propaganda, infiltration, subversion, demoralization that is coming upon America, he said. Uh, that is a goal of the communist. Uh, at least he certainly believed that at the time, and so do I. But they were inflicting that kind of warfare. He continues by saying, It is a warfare that has attacked our minds and moral and spiritual values rather than our bodies and our earthly possessions. He said it's a kind of a warfare we don't understand or know how to cope with. It uses every diabolical means to weaken us from within, sapping our strength, perverting our morals, sabotaging our educational system, wrecking our social structure, destroying our spiritual and religious life, weakening our industrial and economic power, demoralizing our armed forces, and finally, after such infiltration, overthrowing our government by force and violence. Now, that was the goal of the communists, and it certainly was a part of what I'm talking about today, only it is a, a different enemy and about 10,000 times worse 
And I want to show you one. I'm, I'm talking about an Earth and a universe shaking event that occurred, and I mean that literally, literally, which led to this attack that's now coming upon America and has been very focused for nearly two decades. There is a, it is a different warfare in many ways, and I want to show you what the Bible says about that. Notice Revelation 12 and verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his demons, it should read. Uh, that's what they are, fallen angels. And prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. There no, no longer did they have access to heaven. What happened? Verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, or demons, were cast out with him. Now that's an end time setting, and here you have the Satan, the devil, and millions of demons, millions of demons cast out of heaven, out of the universe, and confined to this earth. And let me tell you, they have a great focus on the world's number one superpower, as it is called, although that's somewhat of a misnomer today. But it still is a, a, aimed at a nation that is indeed a superpower. It just, it, it's just that they won't use that power. So if this army that we're talking about here fought God and left the universe scarred, all the planets scarred just about, if he fought God, well, he's not going to be afraid to fight little puny man. And he has an army. Satan has an army of millions of demons, and he is confined to this earth. And he has two priorities, and that is to destroy spiritual Israel, which he already has done, 95% of them, and then the nations of Israel, and one in particular, which is the superpower, and really represents the others in many ways. Satan is not afraid to fight because he knows he has nothing to lose. Now, I have a, a, written a booklet that's almost new. I think I've offered it a couple of times on television. But it explains all this in stark detail where you can understand what is happening in America. Many people look at what's happening and say, well, they've never seen anything happen like this in America before. They've never seen it. Well, it's never been there before. I'm telling you, it hasn't ever been there before. This is something very different. And the only way we're ever going to understand it is to understand our Bibles. The greatest gift afforded by this earth. Indeed, it is. If we understand it. But if we don't understand it, well, it's not of any value. It's not of any value at all. But all you have to do is study this booklet, and you'll understand what I'm talking about, in, I mean, in detail. And I hope I can explain quite a lot of that to you today. But Satan has been uh, cast down. This is an end-time prophecy. But when did that happen? Now, really, let's be honest here, because if you're talking about Satan and millions of demons, and they were cast to this earth and are now confined to this earth, somebody had to know when it happened. The very elect of God had to know because they were victims of it. They had to know when that happened. You can't have something like that happen and not be aware of it. If you're aware of of what's happening spiritually in this world. You cannot. Notice verse 12, Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, even of the sea, you see, because it's so bad. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has but a short time. See, they're, they're rejoicing in heaven because they, they're kicked out forever. 
But uh, Satan is making one final stand here on this earth before God casts him into outer darkness forever. And then there will be peace brought to this earth like it never has even dreamed of. And it's, that's coming, and I'm talking about it in just a tiny few years. It's coming. But you see, this, this is talking about a short time. Well, uh, uh, why does Satan know he has a short time? When he's cast down, he knows almost uh, just a short time after that, Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth, and he's going to be cast off his throne Remember, He is the God of this world. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4, He's going to be cast off that throne and replaced by Jesus Christ, who qualified to replace Him. And Christ is going to rule this world and stop the nuclear madness and bring this world peace and joy forever and ever and ever. Now that's prophesied in your Bible many, many times. It's prophesied there. So you see in America a breakdown of all these values that Mr. Armstrong was talking about. Now that even in 1956, that was caused and, and really inspired and, and uh, motivated by Satan the devil. But it's 10,000 times worse today, at least uh, it's many times worse because Satan and his demons are now cast down to this earth and they, they can't even go out into the universe anymore. Now you know this earth has to suffer from that. There has to be great suffering from that. That's what you're seeing in America and in Britain and in the Jewish nation in the Middle East and other nations. But primarily it's, it's happening, well let's say it's uh, happening most intensely inside Israel's superpower. And if you don't know who Israel is, well, you can't know, uh, under, you can't even understand Bible prophecy. And our book on the United States and Britain and prophecy is, has been given away for years and explains all of that and tells us who Israel is. Then verse 13, And when the dragon saw that he was cast into the earth, he persecuted the woman. Woman is a symbol of a church, in this case God's church. He persecuted the woman immediately, which brought forth the man-child. This is God's own church that brought forth the, 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 the baby Jesus. And uh, uh, that's, that makes it very special. But when Satan was cast down, the very first thing he did was attack God's church, spiritual Israel. But then secondly on that list is the nations of Israel, and one in particular, that is the superpower in America. And of course, if they go down, all Israel goes down. That's basically what it amounts to. But look, this, this, this verse right here dates this. It dates this prophecy and tells you what happened so you can know uh, exactly where we are in Bible prophecy. If you're spiritual, you know when this happened. If you're God's very elect, you know when Satan and the demons by the millions were cast to this earth. You have to know that. And otherwise, how could you proclaim God's message if you didn't? Well, anyhow, 95% of God's people uh, were destroyed. Their faith was destroyed. Their morals and spiritual values were destroyed, or at least they're dying, God says in 2 Thessalonians 2. But that didn't happen to 5% of God's people who, were, who continued to be loyal and proclaim the message of God, the same message that Herbert W. Armstrong proclaimed for over 50 years. Now, it's talking about the destruction of a, a nation and nations after a church has been destroyed. You can read that. I'm just going to paraphrase some of it to you so that uh, you, you can go and read it later. But Daniel 8 talks about that. Verse 17 talks about the last end the very last little end of, end of of this end time. And Daniel is only for this end time. That book is. It's only for that. But it talks about Antiochus there, who 
a type of Antiochus who comes into the church and because of the transgression inside the church or the lawlessness inside the church, Satan used a man to take over the church. Now that's in your Bible and this booklet will prove that to you very forcefully and very, I, I think, uh, uh, in a way that you won't forget it. But, it, but I just want to read verse 12 of Daniel 8 to you. And, and an host, that is a demon army, was given him against the daily, or God's work, by reason of transgression. And it says he cast down the truth to the ground. The values, the spiritual values that, are, that make a church God's church. He cast those down and wrecked God's church when he was cast down to this earth. Now, that has happened, and we'll show you that very clearly. But I just wanted to point out there that, look, this is a, an army of demons, and they have awesome power. If we don't have greater power coming from God, and we, if we don't have that power, then we're going to be overwhelmed by the power of Satan and his demon army. That's the lesson. Now, if that happened to spiritual Israel, what about... Uh, the nations of Israel. Listen, you don't have that kind of massive destruction come upon a church unless it's coming from the top down. Satan got a man in at the very top and, and, and other and his fellows, it says, and this kind of destruction began and they destroyed all the real values of the church of God. That's what he's talking about. Now, I'm going to paraphrase something else to you, but over in 2 Thessalonians 2, I'll just, verse 3, you can read that, where it talks about a great falling away from the church of God, and that man of sin is going to be revealed, that son of destruction, who is a, a type of Judas Iscariot, who became demon-possessed, and it goes on to talk about this great falling away, but it wasn't going to happen until verse 7 says, For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. Or the King James says it until he is taken out of the way. Here is a man that when he it says, when he's taken out of the way, a, a man in God's own church, and when he's taken out of the way, Satan is going to be cast down. Now, that's a specific man in a specific time. God gives us specific scriptures, and yet how many people really understand this? Well, let me tell you very few, because it's about lawlessness. Lawlessness, that's what it's all about. The, the, uh, that spirit of iniquity or lawlessness, that's what that means. And that's what you're seeing happen inside the nation of America today. Lawlessness. Lawlessness. And destruction of values that meant so much to this nation when it was established. We established this nation, believe it or not, to have the very rule of God on this earth. That was the goal of those who who uh, those pioneers who began this nation called America began building it the way we see it is today. But I'll tell you this, uh, when, you, when that army strikes, it does all kinds of damage. Now let's look at verse 14 where it talks about the, nation, uh, the nations of Israel being attacked and America in particular. Now this could be stopped, you see. God is telling us how to stop it. But will we stop it? I don't see any signs of that, do you? But any individual can stop it in his own life and be protected by God. Notice verse 14, God promises this. And to the woman, or the church of God, the very elect here, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, where she is nourished for a time and times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. First of all, I want you to see that God protects His people that are loyal to Him. And then get His message out to the world. That God is real. God is alive. The trouble is people don't believe that and they won't believe it because of their 
lawlessness. They enjoy their lawlessness. And look at the trouble it's bringing upon this land. But if you look at this now in the, in the context here, this is in the context of Satan and the demons being cast to this earth and being confined to this earth. So I've just, I'll just read you a little from the, uh, the America Under Attack booklet. I wrote, the Bible describes the church as spiritual Israel. When Satan was cast down, he immediately went after spiritual Israel. That was his first target, but he didn't stop there. After that, he directed his attack against physical Israel. And that's actually the, uh, the United States, Britain, and the Jewish state in the Middle East, primarily the two birthright nations and the scepter nation. But there's one in particular that Satan is working on, and that is the superpower of Israel. That has per had a lot to do with helping Britain and the Jewish nation survive. And they've helped each other. But I go on to write here, what happened in that church shows you something of a blueprint for what Satan began to do uh, in three nations. That is why that church history is so relevant and important for you to grasp. And then a, just a little more from this booklet. But again, note the chronology here. After the devil attacked the church in verse 13 and devastated it and destroyed the people's faith, he continues his destructive rampage on a larger scale until God has to take his faithful people to a place of safety, most of them in that superpower nation. That also tells you that the devil is attacking the nations of Israel, three in particular, and that attack leads up to the Great Tribulation, you see, which God is warning us about and in His love so that we can avoid that, but uh, we're not going to avoid it. It appears until uh, quite a lot of suffering is, has uh, been uh, uh, occurring. And then I continued there, so even though this passage doesn't explicitly mention physical Israel, Satan's attack uh, on the U.S., Britain, and Israel is the subtext. Satan must have attacked the nations, again, trying to destroy all the values of the nation, and that will bring the nation down. The, our, our values from the past, our constitution which is the supreme law of the land, much of it based on the Bible. And you see people that are so hostile and hateful toward the Constitution today, even when they might be saying otherwise, they show by their fruits that they're hostile to the supreme law of the land, which is talking about lawlessness. That's all it's talking about, and I'll show you a little bit more about that if I have time. He attacked the nations of Israel. This means these nations are in serious trouble. It's so bad that the woman has to flee to be protected by God from the serpent. You see, and it's so bad where she is in, well, most of her of them in the superpower nation, but also in the other nations as well, and even around the world. The uh, one commentator said, we're being led into, uh, the West is being led into an abyss. And that is so true. But also, uh, Melanie Phillips said this, the problem is there's malice against what? Against the West and also against the ancient civilization that lies at the heart of its moral code. That is the Judeo-Christian uh, values that we've had for so many years. And there is malice in this land toward that. And she's exactly right. Exactly right. How many people do you see that have that kind of malice and that kind of hatred and they don't know what they're doing and they don't know what's inspiring and stirring and motivating them? And they don't know often what they're talking about. They just simply do not know. And you can go on to see in Colossians 2 and verse 18 that there, this is all about worshiping the will, the will of man. That's lawlessness. That's what happened to the church. They began to worship the will, which is the worshiping of demons, it says in verse 18 and 23 of Colossians 2. And that's exactly what's happening in the land today. We're worshiping the will, not the law, not the Constitution that is based on, on many biblical values that are uh, there for all eternity. So, 
that's the way Hitler deceived Germany. He said, look, there's this magic interpretation. And when he was telling the people that in World War II, there's this magic interpretation of the will, not the intellect. But it didn't, it wasn't even logical. But he said, this, there's just a magic interpretation. What he's talking about is Satan and demonism. That's what it was all about. How long will it take us to see? Uh, Isaiah says in uh, verse 4 of chapter 1 that we have forsaken the Lord. We've gone away backward. Everything is backward and upside down. And oh, the destruction it's bringing upon this land. You see, it's not some radical group, group's fault. They're just leading the way. The radicals and those who are lawless, they're just leading the way. But the fault is in the American people. They're not living according to God's way of life. They've forsaken Him. They're turning away backward and getting rid of the values that make any nation strong and destroy any nation that continues to practice such lawlessness. You see, it's only God that can save America or any other nation. That's what we have to understand. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. Experts are realizing that America is facing the same situation as ancient Rome. That empire deteriorated from within and then fell. But the fact that history repeats itself is not the entire reason for America's decline. Our free booklet, America Under Attack, reveals how the United States has been targeted by an evil spiritual force. It shows that because of sin, Satan the devil and his demons have been able to gradually destroy America. You need to read this eye-opening booklet and prove whether or not it is true from your Bible. Request America Under Attack. Also request our Philadelphia Trumpet reprint article, Satan Cast Down. God the Father delivered a prophecy through Jesus Christ to the Apostle John, who wrote that Satan would be cast down to the earth. This article shows you that God's prophecy has come to pass, just as he said it would. For America Under Attack, the Philadelphia Trumpet, and Satan Cast Down, visit thetrumpet.com today. On thetrumpet.com, you can view, download, or request your own personal copies of literature, or call our toll-free number, 888-627-5347.